In a recent video on Google Stitch, I posed the question to you, could it replace web designers? The simple answer was not at this point in time. However, as with all things AI, today is the worst they're ever going to be. So we're going to continue the same kind of trend, but this time we're going to look at it from a coding point of view. We're going to be using Bolt, part of a new sort of wave of coding based AI tools, and we're going to see how this works. So this isn't going to be a tutorial. This is kind of like a, an overview and a kind of feeling. But as with all of these kinds of videos, I want to put the question over to you. Would you use something like this? Do you already use something like this? And do you see it replacing coders in the next 12 to 24 months? Drop a comment down below. Let me have your thoughts, experience and feedback there. I would love to know. OK, so first of all, let's take a quick look at some of the things that I've used Bolt to actually create to get a feel for what you can do. Then we'll take a look at creating something using Bolt for ourselves and see fundamentally how it works, the kind of things we get back from it and how you maybe need to prompt it and be very specific in what you want to achieve. So one of the applications that I wanted to create was a very simple design system generator. This handles things like colors, complementary colors, checking for accessibility, spacing, typography, those kinds of things. This is still very much a work in progress, so don't expect it to be perfect. But the fact that this is actually up and running and doing most of what I wanted to do, and I haven't had to touch a piece of code, is pretty exciting. So let's take a look at what it does. So this is my style guide generator. We can, of course, pop in the colors that we want to use. So we can check any color we want. So if you've got a specific color, drop that color in there and ask it to actually then create a color palette from it. You can, of course, use the surprise me option. We've also then got the different kind of color harmony references, things like complementary, analogous, triadic, tetradic. You get the idea how these kinds of things work. Then you've got your primary colors, your secondary colors, your neutral colors, success, warning, error, and info, the kind of typical sort of pop-up dialog boxes you have, your typography, spacing system, and then some basic previews of what it, things would look like based upon the color choices and spacing choices and so on that we pick. So when you use the surprise me, that will then go and create the primary, secondary colors and so on. We can, of course, change things here and use the different options. We can generate a palette from here if we want to. As you can see, it starts to pull in the various different colors. You can check the accessibility. That will tell you then whether it passes or fails based upon the WCAG standards. You've got a contrast grid so we can see the contrast ratios. Again, check in whether you've got AAA, AA or it's a fail. And we can see that at a glance. And if we come down, you can see we've got the different typography. So let's say we want to choose something like Nanito. You could then add that. And you can see now we get our heading one through six body. You get the idea. Same thing goes here. So you've got your base unit of four. Let's say we want to set that something like base unit of eight. Then you can generate your scale. And again, you can see there's your scale being generated and a visual representation of it. And then underneath, we've got some component previews and the typography previews and so on. Pretty nifty little thing. And then you can export this out as a JSON file. I've also been experimenting with creating a typical mobile application, something that you could use just directly on your phone, your tablet, whatever. That's not based it on your sort of website kind of layout. And that's exactly what I have here. It's a wellness kind of application. You can see a visual representation of it here. This, again, is a work in progress as I'm kind of going through and learning how these various different things work but you can see we've got our navigation down the bottom you've got your basic info on there go to articles for example you can see there's our articles click and go take a look at the full article you've got your workshops you can see there's information about the workshop join that session and you've got a, a kind of booking form and you can complete your booking and so on We've then got our experts, and as you can see, there's various different pieces of information inside there. This works really well on a mobile as well, and you can preview this by simply using the device preview, install Expo Go, and then just scan that QR code, and you can see exactly what it looked like on a mobile device. So pretty nifty on what you can do here. So how would you go about actually using something like Bolt to get something like this created. Well, let's take a quick look. Now, first things first, I am using a paid Bolt account. You don't need to, though. You can get started for absolutely free, and you get a certain number, I think something like 10 million sort of 
tokens. And there are various different ways in which you can actually use Bolt to reduce the number of tokens that you use for various different parts of the design iteration process. So the first thing you need to do is simply describe what you want. Be as descriptive as possible. You can also import from Figma. So if you have a design in Figma and you want to use that, you can absolutely use it. If you have a sort of visual mockup in another format, you can add that inside here as well, and it'll semi-use information inside there to create what it is you're asking it to create. But for now, let's just keep this super easy and simple and just prompt it directly without messing about with those additional things. Okay, I'm asking it to create a business listing website for a local town and told it exactly what kind of information I want in there. This is a starting point. The more detailed you can get at this point, the better chance you're going to get of getting a good starting point. But you don't need to go into incredible amounts of detail if should you want to sort of just start a kind of design process that's just an idea. So let's click on to go ahead and start creating this. Then that's going to take a few moments to go through and read what I've asked you to do, go through and think it, and then start creating everything behind the scenes, all the file structure, the files, the database structure, all those kinds of things will be created for you. And as you can see, it's going through and setting everything up for us. So once it's done this, they will get a preview of it, and then we can move on from there. So we go, after about two minutes, we now have our starting point. So let's take a quick look and see what it has done and if there's anything it hasn't done for us. So we've got our business name at the top, because it's a business directory. We've got our dark mode and light mode toggles. We've got the ability to see all businesses, our home, for example. We'll come back onto the all businesses in a moment. Then we've got some kind of information about the number of businesses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Popular categories. And then we've got some businesses themselves. As you can see, we've got a nice little hover effect on here so we can see how it all works. Now, the cool thing here is, and this is quite surprising, I didn't expect this to happen. This has gone online, looked for the name of the town that I'm talking about, in this case, Abergavenny. It's actually pulled in information from the actual businesses. So for example, the Angel Hotel is an actual business. It is a historic coaching inn in the heart of Abergavenny. So that is correct. The address is correct. The walnut tree, the market, these are all real businesses in that town. That's pretty cool. If we want to view all the businesses, you can see that takes us in and that shows us the businesses. We've got a nice little toggle here that allows us to switch between sort of different list views, which again is pretty nice. We can close that down and back up. We've got filters. So for example, we filter based upon restaurant. We now have a restaurant. Let's click and go and take a look. And there's our actual business with the details included. Now, obviously, the location here, we've got an error. And as you can see, it pops up and tells us an error. Now, the main probably reason for this is because we don't actually have a Google Maps API connected up to be able to use this effectively. So even though I've asked it to put it in there, there is a bit of a problem. So you can ask it to attempt to fix it. And sometimes this will work. Sometimes it won't. A little trick if you do come across a problem like this is you can take a screen grab of the problem and then you can paste that into your actual prompt and tell it to take a look at the problem and fix it for us. That can sometimes help it get a better end result. But as you can see, it's now going through. It's trying to pull in. As you can see, removed an invalid API key. We don't actually have an API key being used here, so chances are this is going to continue to fail. So not the end of the world, and obviously something we could correct if we were going to go for a live site. Now, even the text here is actually being pulled in from the actual website itself. So I do think that's a pretty nifty starting point. I do like the fact that we've got our light mode and dark mode. Maybe the color choice is not actually the best, but you know you get the idea. So now we've got the basics in place. You can now start to iterate and ask you to do more things. So for example, let's say, ask you to simply add in some more data. Now, if you're enjoying this video and you like this kind of content, why not pop down below and give it a thumbs up to tell YouTube that you enjoy this form of content. And while you're down there, why not hit the subscribe button to be notified when I release more content like this. But if you're not enjoying it, well, you can hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. Anyway, let's get back on with this video. 
Now, while we're waiting for to actually add in the additional businesses, let's take a look at the left-hand side. This is kind of like your history of everything you've asked it, everything is done, and everything is kind of doing from a code point of view, etc. So you can see when we asked it to start off with, it's created the dependencies, it's installed those dependencies, so we don't have to deal with those things. There's created all these pages, we've got this page structure, and you can see all these files that have been created behind the scenes for us. As you can see, tells us we've got an error, we can't correct it, which in this example, like I say, is pretty much down to the API. We don't have that API connected up correctly. So let's just not worry too much about that. Tells you then comes back and tells you what it's done, which is quite cool. If there's any problems, it'll show what the problem is. You can see Google Maps JavaScript API error, invalid key, which we kind of figured out anyway. Okay, so we're gonna kind of go through it. If it's any errors, it'll tell us what those errors are. So you can see this has got added the businesses in, tells us which business is added in. Again, these are all actual businesses on the website that I created years ago for this, comp this uh, sort of town. So that's pretty nifty. I like how it's done that. Now, while we're sort of waiting for things to sort of refresh here, let's take a look in the code side of things. If we click on here, this will show us all the files that have been created, the structure, the database structure, and so on. Then we can click on any of these and find out the information that's been actually included in this. So if you want to make changes here, you absolutely can do. You can come in and start customizing this. So if you are comfortable working in the code environment, you could easily come in and make changes yourself, customize things, and all the files are clearly evident and available here. So your index HTML, for example, that's all here. You can see how this works. It's even pulled in the meta name, the description, the details, and so on. Now, I'm guessing what this is doing is it's actually looking at the website that exists and it's pulling in that information, or it's using that as a starting point to actually build things out for us, which in this example is actually quite useful because we may be building a site that's replacing the existing one, and we would like to sort of use that to iterate an idea and then hand that off to a client so they can get some feedback on it and say what they like, what they don't like, and then go on from there. Okay, so now it's come back with our additional businesses. And as we can see, we can easily filter those based upon what we have here. So all that side of things is working. Now, the problem we've got is if we have all categories, we now have a huge long list of, in this case, 26 businesses. So we can now start asking you to do things like, well, you know, we don't want to have 26 businesses, but you get the idea. I don't want to go down the, the rabbit hole of showing you how to iterate this every single one. If you'd like something like that, where we build something completely, do let me know in the comment section down below. But what you can see from what we've done here with a couple of prompts, we already have a great starting point for a design that we could share with a client. Now, speaking of sharing with a client, we have this option to open a preview in a separate tab. Once you do that, it will ask you to connect to the project, so we'll connect to it. And now we kind of get rid of the distractions that Bolt includes, and we now have the site being shown here where we can go in and we can take a look at the businesses, we can view all businesses our filters and everything are here. So we have this kind of fully featured site. We can switch between the different modes, the different layouts, and we can just keep on iterating until I get exactly what we want. If you want to check if this is responsive, we can switch into responsive mode, and we can see what this will look like. And as you can see, pretty decent from this point in time. So everything is looking pretty good there. We can choose different devices. So we say we want to look at something like a Pixel 9, for example. It'll show us what it looks like on there. You've then got an inspector, which allows you to inspect elements on the actual page itself. So for example, we may want to take a look at one of these cards or the information inside there. You can click, tells you it's a div, gives you information, and then you can actually go through and you can ask it to do things. So we can target specifically what we want to change, update, or modify, which is pretty cool. And we can also switch to full screen if we want to. And again, we can still keep the sort of selection option so we can select what's on screen going. Now, I said earlier on, there was ways of cutting down the number of tokens you use when you're going through the iteration process in Bolt. To do that, you simply come down to the prompting area at the bottom, and you can see we have the option to toggle between discussion and build mode. Now, build mode is what we're in at the moment, and this uses the most tokens, whereas if you switch it to discussion mode, you can discuss various different aspects. It's not going to be as powerful as working in the sort of full mode, but it allows you to at least ask questions and make sort of little tweaks and things by using this mode, which is really useful. You can also from here upload files. You can enhance the prompt if you've put a prompt in and you want to sort of tweak it to get a better sort of a better prompt, a little bit more sort of focused on what you want to do. And you've also got the on the prompt library. So if you 
want to prompt it in spe specific ways, you can do absolutely do that. So you can see we've got usability, SEO, miscellaneous, et cetera, et cetera. So there are common things that are going to be asked of any kind of project. You don't have to type those in. You can literally just ask this, like international internationalization setup. Not so easy to say today. And that's fundamentally the basics of working with Bolt. But there's still more things you can do. You'll notice at the top we've got integrations. If we open this up, currently I've got a couple of integrations set up, but you can see we can integrate this with Stripe, Superbase, GitHub, and so on. So if you want to use a database to store your information, so maybe you create something like this, you're going to need somewhere to store that data. You want to then create a sort of form that businesses can actually add their own business listing in, etc. save that info to a database and do things with it then you can connect this up and use Superbase to handle that side of things. I've only ever used the free version, so I have no idea price-wise or anything like that when it comes to the paid Superbase. And finally, once you've got everything in place and you're happy, you can then go and publish the site. So you click on Publish, choose the Publish option. And once that's finished, I've got mine connected to Netlify. So all I need to do is click on the link. And I now have a link that I could easily share with anybody of this fully working version of the site. So they can then come in and they can take a look at it, see how it all works, give me feedback on it. And if you wanted to, if you do want to use this then to build it, you just want to use this to kind of prototype it and then build this yourself. Again, you absolutely could do. So what are my thoughts on Bolt in comparison to what we took a look at previously? I think Bolt or the tools like this are incredibly powerful. There are some caveats to what I would recommend, though. If you're creating something like this where there's no real interaction, there's no real security issues, then I wouldn't worry. You could use a tool like this without any problem whatsoever. However, when you start storing user data and things like that, or you've got sensitive data, you need to know what's going on. You need to understand the code. You need to understand the technology underneath it. So. I do think it's useful for people that just want to kind of get something up and running. They maybe want to create a little application like I showed you at the beginning where there's no data being stored. There's no persistent data, no database connections, no user data being handled. Then I think it's perfect for something like that. But when you want to move beyond that and you need to really go into more comprehensive applications and things, this is where I think you need to be careful and have a really solid understanding of what's going on to avoid any security issues. But as I said at the top of this video, I want your feedback. Have you used Bolt or Lovable or any tool like this? Any kind of vibe coding, which is the in term at the moment? Let me know in the comment section down below. And has this video interested you into what you could do with it? So you're going to have a play about? Again, let me know. Try the free Bolt account. Get a feel for how it works. Have a bit of fun. And if you enjoy it and you want to upgrade, then take a look at that. Or look at the other options available. As always, all applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.